The type chart in Pokemon is one of the most important aspects of the entire game. Whether you're starting your first adventure or a veteran trainer doing victory laps around the regions, knowing the interactions between the 18 types is essential to becoming a true Pokemon master. While there's been some updates over the years with the additions of new types and balancing out of some overpowered ones, since the introduction of fairy types in Generation 6, it's remained the same. Personally, I don't see it changing anytime soon, unless Pokemon decides to throw something at the wall and see if it sticks. However, back in Generation 6, we were treated to an interesting addition that flipped the type chart on its head, quite literally. The Inverse Battle. By battling Psychic Inver on Route 18 in X and Y, you can take part in a battle in which type matchups are reversed and no type is immune to another type. While at first it caused my brain to malfunction, I quickly took a liking to this new battle style. Unfortunately, outside of one other inclusion in Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire, we haven't seen it since. Today, I want to take an in-depth look at the inverse type chart and show you all some of the crazy imbalances it causes. If you think the normal type chart is imperfect, then you're in for a treat. Before we jump in, be sure to subscribe and drop a like down below. My dog gets some extra love every time someone likes or subscribes, and he's a very needy boy. So give him some love, we'd both appreciate it. Alright, let's start this look into the inverse type chart with the offensive matchups. This is the simplest part to understand. Anything a type was super effective to is now not very effective, and vice versa. Because of how balanced the normal type chart is, for some, this doesn't make much of a difference. Fairy, Fire, Flying, Ghost, Ice, and Water end up having the same amount of super effective and not very effective hits. In fact, there are only two types that actually suffer from this flip, that being the Rock and Ground types. Rock goes from hitting 4 for super effective damage down to 3, and Ground jumps from 5 to 3. A loss, yes, but nothing debilitating. Besides, if you've been counting along, then you'd know we're left with 10 types, a majority, that actually benefit from this flip. One big reason these types are helped by this is because of the removal of immunities. As I mentioned earlier, there are no type immunities in inverse battles, so a type like Dragon gains an extra super effective hit off a of fairy, in addition to hitting steel, which naturally resists it. Of these 10 types, half of them gain one extra super effective hit, being Fighting, Steel, Psychic, Dragon, and Dark. As for the remainders, Electric doubles what it normally hits thanks to the removal of the ground immunity. Poison gets an even bigger boost, hitting 5 types as opposed to its normal 2, thanks to Steel's loss of immunity. Normal, like Poison, adds a plus 3 to its super effective hits, thanks to the removal of the ghost immunity. However, the normal type is much more broken than Poison. Normal's advantage comes in the fact that it typically doesn't hit anything for super effective damage. So if you're following along, this means because of the inversion, it has no resistances. There's a reason that no type is currently set up this way. Because it'd be broken. If you're a more competitive player, just think this. Choice specs boom burst. No resistances. No immunities. No switch-ins. Jesus. But as amazing as the normal type becomes, we still have two types to touch on, being the ones that gain the most from the inversion. These types are Grass and Bug. They each go from hitting three types for super effective to a whopping seven. For context, in the normal type chart, Ground and Fighting both hit the most types, that being only five. I know it's only two more, but seven types is roughly 40% of all types. Hitting over a third of the type chart for super effective damage is pretty crazy. Between Grass and Bug, you might be wondering which one takes the crown, if either. And overall, I think the Grass type deserves the gold medal here. Grass type moves are normally resisted by more in the Pokedex than Bug type moves are, so I felt it deserves the top spot. But at this point you're probably wondering, what's the best dual type offensively? At first you're probably inclined to put our top types together, and while this is good, they have a lot of overlap in what they hit, so you only end up hitting 10 types for super effective damage. And hey, that's still great, don't get me wrong. Only 4 other type combinations also hit 10 types. However, there's one type combination that is able to hit 11. Go ahead, make a guess. Throw it down in the comments too. You know, YouTube algorithm and whatnot. Okay, ready to see if you're right? The correct answer is... Bug and Electric. Conveniently, these two have no offensive overlaps in the inverse type chart, so you get to add their numbers straight together. 
This means that Galvantula and Vikavolt are the Pokemon with the best stab coverage under the inverse type chart. Okay, now that we've gone through the offensive, let's get to the defensive. This half of the chart might be a bit harder to wrap your head around, but to put it simply, any weaknesses are now resistances, and any resistances are now weaknesses. This is where the cracks in the inverse type chart really start to show. To start off, just like with the offensive, this doesn't make a ton of difference for some types. Normal, Fighting, Ground, Bug, and Dark all end up having the same number of resistances and weaknesses as they did before. As for our winners this time around, Rock, Grass, and Psychic are three of only four types to actually lose a weakness, albeit it's only one for each. Otherwise, only one type massively benefits defensively from this inverse, the Ice type. Typically only resisted by itself, Ice goes from having four weaknesses down to one. This is an incredible benefit, and with the Ice type still hitting four types for super effective damage, Ice is one of the types gaining the most overall from the inversion. Unfortunately, if you've been doing the math, you'd know that leaves nine types, exactly half, at a defensive loss. Flying and Dragon gain one weakness apiece, and Ghost, Water, Electric, and Fairy all gain two weaknesses. Even worse though, Poison and Fire take a massive loss, each gaining three weaknesses. However, even three additional weaknesses pales in comparison to our biggest loser. That type goes from being the best defensively to the undisputed worst. Steel. The Steel type goes from having three weaknesses to 11. That's 61% of the type chart to be exact. Odds are that any Pokemon with more than one attacking move hits Steel types for super effective damage. I knew Steel types had a lot of natural resistances, but this type chart flip really puts that into perspective. It's funny because 11 resistances is definitely a lot, but isn't game breaking. Otherwise, we would have seen some changes within the past few generations. But 11 weaknesses? That's a straight up useless type. Think about the bad rep that Ice gets for having four weaknesses and only one resistance. Now multiply that by three. I could keep going, but I think y'all get the message. Now that we've covered all the individual types, let's take a look at what the best and worst dual types are defensively. If you've been paying attention, you'd know that the Ice type is a great option to pair with due to its incredible defensive typing. Pause, that hurt my brain to say. This is the problem with the inverse type chart. Out of context, to a trained Pokemon ear, I just sound stupid. Anyways, Ice has several great combinations that amount to only two weaknesses. Ice and Ground is especially good, as your weaknesses are Electric and Poison, two relatively uncommon offensive types. Shout out to Mamoswine for being solid in either iteration of the type chart. Personally, Ice and Water is one of my favorite combos, as its weaknesses are... Ice and Water. There's always been something funny to me about a Pokemon being weak to its own typing. It's the same situation with Ice and Psychic as well here, only being weak to Ice and Psychic, meaning Jinx's biggest enemy is... itself. Which honestly, given all the anime controversy in the past, is quite fitting. But as great as the Ice type is defensively under the inverse chart, it's Jinx's other typing of Psychic that's in the best position defensively. Under the inverse type chart, Psychic is only weak to Fighting and Psychic, and resist Bug, Dark, and Ghost. So if you pair it with a type like Normal, that resists Fighting and is weak to Ghost, you're left with a typing that only has one weakness, Psychic. Shout out to my boy Girafferig. The only other type combo to have one weakness is also part Psychic, and that's the Psychic Dark type. These two types balance out each other's weaknesses quite well, also only being weak to Psychic. However, it's not as good as the Psychic Normal type, as its weakness is a 4 times weakness. Regardless, one 4 times weakness isn't a bad thing. Just look at Swampert or Scizor normally. They're not complaining. Overall, Psychic types have a great defensive niche under this format. And just like with the Ice type, that's probably the last time anybody will praise the Psychic type for its defensive prowess. Now that that's covered, the more fun question is, What's the worst defensive dual typing? Well, as you can probably guess, Steel is going to be one of them. The worst defensive typing without Steel is Electric and Fire, which has a total of 8 weaknesses, which is still several off what Steel is weak to on its own. So to answer the question, the worst defensive typing is a tie. 
The first of which is Steel and Normal, with 12 weaknesses. Unfortunately, there is no Steel Normal type as of yet, so that's kind of a disappointing answer. The other typing with 12 weaknesses is Steel and Electric, leaving the Magnemite line and Togedemaru as the worst defensive Pokemon under the inverse type chart. But hey, at least ground type isn't an issue. While those type combos have the most weaknesses, there are two other dual types that deserve mention when discussing the worst defenses. And those typings are Steel Poison and Steel Fire. While these two only have 10 weaknesses apiece as opposed to 12, of those weaknesses, Steel and Poison has 4 4 times weaknesses, and Steel and Fire has 5. That's absolutely crazy. The most 4 times weaknesses any Pokemon has normally caps out at 2. Although technically a Parasect with the ability Dry Skin has an 8 times weakness to Fire. But even then, 5 4 times weaknesses is just insane. So, uh, don't use Heatran in inverse battles, I guess. Now that we've covered both offense and defense, I want to touch on a few interesting things I learned while doing research for this video. I think it's safe to say that the Steel type suffered the most from the type chart inversion, but there's one type that I feel got even more screwed over. The Fairy type. In this format, it's only super effective to Fire, Poison, and Steel, which are the three types with the most weaknesses. Some types hit these three plus some, making Fairy type kind of unnecessary offensively. And when you look at defensive matchups, Fairy only resists two types, Poison and Steel, which aren't super common attacking types. And again, I don't think anybody's dying to use Steel in this format. Meanwhile, it's weak to Bug, Fighting, Dragon, and Dark, which is a much more threatening bunch of types to deal with. So Fairy ends up losing a ton in the inverse type chart. This makes a lot of sense though, as Fairy types quickly became one of the best types as they were introduced, and it's only natural that the inverse of the top is the bottom. Fairy types aren't the only ones to take a big hit though, as overall, inverting the type chart hurts more than it helps. If you look at the types with only one weakness normally, they all end up in a worse position after the flip. The electric type as a whole jumps up to three weaknesses. Ghost and dark types like Sableye or Spiritum bump up to three weaknesses. Water ground types, poison dark types, and specifically Rotom Wash jump up to five. And bug and steel types get it the worst of all, skyrocketing up to nine weaknesses. Meanwhile, you might assume that the Pokemon that normally have the most weaknesses end up having significantly less, right? Yeah, not really. I mean, sure, a Pokemon like Abomasnow goes from having 7 weaknesses down to 4, which is a great improvement, but the others see little to no movement at all. Brass and Psychic types and the Rock Fighting type Terrakion only lose 1 weakness, going from 7 down to 6, and Grass Dark types and the Almighty Tyranitar make a lateral move from 7 to 7, simply changing their weaknesses. And for a Pokemon like Tyranitar, I might say its weaknesses under this format are worse than it was normally. So all in all, like I said, the inverse type chart hurts more than it helps. Sure, there are some types and individual Pokemon that benefit from it, but as a whole, the inverse type chart causes more issues than it fixes. Maybe that's why we haven't seen it again outside of Generation 6. What are your thoughts on inverse battles and the inverse type chart? Do you want to see it implemented again in the future, or would you rather it stay left in the past? Let me know in the comments below! Thanks so much for watching, and be sure to leave a like, subscribe, and ring the notification bell so you know when I upload. I have plenty more stuff in the works for y'all, and I'm excited to keep this channel going strong this year. But before I go work on more videos, as thanks for making it to the end of this one, here's a picture of my dog. Talk to y'all soon!